dropship was from this area. That was over 12 hours ago. When you locate Captain Keys, radio in, and I'll come pick you up. So the great journey continues. Now we're in the swamp level. The swamp level is really good. This one's called 343 Guilty Spark. It's full of uh, fog effects. The trees up there are really huge. They're part of the level geometry, but things like the uh, the plants and the rocks aren't the manually placed again. I'm not entirely sure how these firefly looking things are done. I'd have to look in the engine for that. It's been a while since I've had a look at the engine, about 2009 since I actually dabbled with it. But yeah. <coughs> Oof. This level sets up a lot of uh, mysterious elements. I love the way everything's exploding like a Michael Bay film already. It sets up a lot of mysterious elements, including the uh, first part here with the crashed pelican. So, this is really where it kind of goes from your friendly romp in the park, killing aliens, to actual Aliens the movie. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that as they're approaching the complex in Hadley's Hope. It's no surprise really considering that Halo is inspired by uh, Aliens quite a lot. Is it, I remember the development team even admitting that in some interviews. I mean, there's a crashed sp uh, spirit dropship there as well, which kind of uh, gives you this weird feeling that something else is going down. The atmosphere is really cool because it, it kind of gets you thinking. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And then you've got these jackals and grunts of the odd elite roaming around trying to stop you from progressing to the facility. Possibly to stop you from... Uh, doing anything stupid, but we're going to do stuff, something stupid anyway. So we're going to go around here and across this fallen tree, there, if I remember rightly, there is a, uh, a skull round here somewhere on anniversary mode. I think it's on like the other side. But here's where we start going into more Forerunner facilities. Here we go. I don't know if I actually got anyone with that plasma grenade, but I'm just going to chuck another one there to uh, see what happens. Yeah, looks like I got him. In this level, there's a lot of close quarters combat. We're going to be introduced to the shotgun for, I think it's the first time, later on. So, that's going to be fun. We've got all this kind of mood lighting going on. And some, uh, some Covenant boxes and stuff lying around for scenery or cover. So now we're going to go deeper into Halo and find out the mystery as it were as to uh, what's going on. In terms of modding and everything, oh, all these things, oh crap, that's a great grenade Dave. All the, uh, all the items will have been placed by hand including I think these little lights here. And I think it, on one of those, there's a, a skull or a terminal on anniversary mode. But no, in terms of modding, all the doors are manually placed as well, but everything else is uh, modelled in. Oh, crap. I can't remember how they do the light bridges, though, in this game, because I never really checked them out when I was modding the game too much. Oh. So... Let's have a look here. Got a grub. Headshot. Got a uh, sparking effect. <laughs> but yeah, this is a lot of close combat stuff. And it's really crazy. I've had plenty of games on this level where you just get a lot of crazy crap happening later on. Normally it's pretty easy to run through on the lower difficulty levels, but on the higher ones it gets a little bit awkward because of uh, just where the enemies are fighting you from. They're all fighting you inside these very enclosed spaces. So 
going to kind of push forwards and attack them head on and it kind of forces you into that mentality of just kind of like get out of my way, come on, move. So it's, uh, it uses the assault rifle, or rather it, it makes use of the assault rifle pretty well. Headshot. But yeah, I really love the atmosphere and tone that's set up in this level. It's, it's fantastic and yet again with the forerunner geometry, when you look at the wall you can see it looks it almost looks 3D from quite a lot of angles. I'm not sure whether that's bump mapping, normal mapping, or like an early way of faking stuff. But that looked really good, and it still looks really good now. So you got. F <laughs> I'm not sure I did that. I think, if I remember rightly, yeah, these are the barricades that the Covenant construct uh, to stop the flood later on but they've been completely overrun. I love the way they've managed to somehow get these uh, turrets down here and we finally get to see how needlers are reloaded. The, they've just got a load of needler crystals on hand. Although the needler I imagine would be pretty crap in this environment. Sounds like he's trying to do his best Hudson impression there from Aliens, but I... When you first come into this mission, you feel really confused and conflicted about what the hell that Marine's doing, although some people just shoot him in the face straight away. But yeah, the uh, the big clue as to what's going on when you're first playing this or you're trying to figure out what's going on is the, the green mood lighting, which becomes a theme later on, and uh, the odd little bits of slime that are dripping from the roof. I love the way they've more or less used a lot of the same geometry for the entire level, so you'll get like the same corridors just in different places. I actually never checked to see what those forerunner symbols are because they each mean a different thing. It's uh, it's pretty neat. I mean like, I think those lights are manually placed as well. If I remember rightly. It's it's one thing to uh, to kind of guess, but it's another thing to uh, try and guess after about almost ten years of not using the engine. And all these holograms are individually placed. The scenery, if I remember rightly. There's a lot of times where I'll just say, if I remember rightly, because I'm not entirely sure. It's like an estimated guess. Love this area though, that that just says it all with the blood here and the marine that's just kind of splattered next to two medipacks. So here's where all hell's gonna break loose, and uh, I'm probably gonna have a lot more of a harder time. Part of my history, that's fine by me. 
Brisket better it than us. You ask him real nice next time you see him, Vicente. I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige. Now, V looks clear. I'm bringing us down. Go, go, go! Stay close, Jenkins! Mendoza, move it up! Wait here for the captain and his squad, then get your ass inside. Sir! Okay, let's move! Which is weird, right? I mean, look at it. Something scrambled the insides. What's that? Plasma scoring? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was an accident, you know, friendly fire or something? What do we have, Sergeant? Looks like a Covenant patrol. Badass elite units. All KIA. Real pretty. Friend of yours? Nah, we just met. Right, well, let's get this door open. I'll try, sir, but it looks like these Covenant work pretty hard to lock it down. Just do it, son. Yes, sir. Feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Sergeant, can you hear me? What's going on, soldier? He's got contact! Lots of them! But they're not coming in! They're, they're just tearing through him! What the slow down! Corporal! Do you copy? Over! Mendoza, get your ass back up to second squad's position and find out what the hell is going on. But I don't have time for your lip, soldier. I gave you an Sarge, order. Sarge, listen. What is that? Where's that coming from, Everywhere. Mendoza? I don't... There! Get up! Hold still! Hold still! Let him have it! Sergeant, we're surrounded. God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! There are too many, Sergeant! Don't even think about it, Marine. What is it, Roko? Get back here, Marine! That's an order! Jenkins! So yeah, that's the introduction to the Flood, which is a big twist when you first play the game, and it also reminds me of the uh, the a entering the Aliens Hive in the James Cameron's film Aliens. And uh, interestingly enough, you know when they're on about contacting Second Squad on the radio, and Second Squad are like, "It's not covered." Oh! This is uh, really frightening the first time you. Uh, you hear that, because that had me wondering what was going on in the next minute we're fighting popcorn. <laughs> the assault rifle is really good against these, so is the pistol, although they're not too good. The shotgun and the assault rifle are the best combos to fight Flood with. So we're just plowing through popcorn here. <laughs> or at least that's the, uh, the name given to the smaller flood infection forms here. What the flood do is they actually attach to your central nervous system and take over your body. And uh, they also take over your, <laughs> your brain functions as well. So eventually you'll end up with no memory and you'll just become a mindless zombie. 
But interestingly enough, the in an interview, or rather, when you see the the video for the in-game commentary that was done by uh, Jason, Marty, and I think it's uh, yeah, it's Joseph. Jo oh, no, sorry, Jason Jones, Marty O'Donnell, and Joe State, the um, lead writer. So it's the lead writer, the composer, and the uh, main developer or project lead. They actually talk about the fact that the, the bit where uh, Jenkins is looking around, that was deliberately done so they could uh, spawn in different characters in different positions because they didn't have a way of having them react like that so early on. So you end up with uh, the characters kind of going off screen for a second, spawning in in a different position, and then... Uh, he looks the other way just so that they can keep up the illusion. It's really fun. A really sneaky way of doing it as well because it's really well done. I'm trying to remember what I have to... Oh crap! Whether I have to go through here or not. And as you can tell, all these flood. Get up in your face. The next minute you're running for your life. So I'm just trying to find the green doors that allow me to get out of here. Can't remember. No, it's not that one. So it's got to be the one that I came through just. Oh, crap. Trying to avoid all these goddamn flood forms is really annoying. That's why I said the assault rifle's really good for this part of the game because of how well it keeps them away. I say that and then I grenade myself. Well done, Dave. Very smart of you. So this is what I was on about before. Those are the uh, flood spores, or rather the... I wouldn't say blood, but it's kind of like the slime or ooze from the flood that's now leaking from the roof. So we have to deal with multiple areas in which there are tons of flood spores and uh, warrior forms. Oh crap. The worst part is when you stick one like that. It's like you stick one of them and you jump out here. And next minute you end up with no shield because they do not care. Unlike elites and grunts and everything, where when you shoot them they move out of the way or they try and dodge you. Or they just try and get out of your firing angle. Flood do not care. They'll, uh, they'll get up in your face and try and kill you no matter what happens. No matter whether they get taken down or not. So the AI really does change between them. It's not as if you kind of took the, uh, the Covenant and give them a reskin. I need the uh, shotgun from down there. Oh, so this is the first time we get the shotgun. And it's an amazing weapon. It's like short to mid-range on this game. So, you end up being able to get quite a few decent ranged kills with it. The uh, the In future games, they'd change the range of it to quite short. So it was more powerful at short range, but in Halo 1 you can actually get some good uh, mid-distance kills with it. It's like you can shoot someone from maybe about quarter, a yeah, quarter of Blood Gulch's length and actually kill them, which is quite hilarious. All the blood all over these walls here, Christ. So here we go. We're going to use the shotgun to try and run through the entire level. Oh, come on. Oh, no, the light bridge gave out. You can actually cross there if you get really lucky, but it's kind of like a, a one-off thing that is really rare to do. As you can see, I'm just trying to get out of these areas as quickly as possible, because if you get ganged up on by the flood, it tends to be that you take a lot of damage really fast. It's not like the Covenant, where they kind of do slow damage over time, Instead, these just keep coming, keep coming and keep rushing, which is really bad. You can actually, t to your advantage, though, in this area, destroy the floor there. It doesn't give you too much of a, an edge, but it does help a little bit. The Covenant, uh, well, the, the flood-infected uh, troops can jump really high, but I'm not sure in this game whether that was something that the 
introduced or whether it was in later games, but I do remember them being able to jump quite high. Oh, yep, there we go. So it's it's a case of they made them able to moon jump, almost. That's the uh, the other advantage that they have over normal troops is that they can moon jump and they can resurrect themselves. If you see a uh, a downed flood trooper or down flood unit, best thing to do is try and destroy it because the spores will resurrect the dead ones. I think they're already dead, but if more flood spores get back into them, they'll resurrect very quickly. Oh. That and the flood can hold a wide range of weapons as well, which is not good for when you're trying to uh, fight them off because they can hold almost every weapon in the game apart from... I think it's sniper rifles, fuel rod guns, flamethrowers, and uh, I'm trying to think what else. There was, there was a, a small number of the, the game's large arsenal of weapons that they can't use. I know you don't see them with sniper rifles, or rather I don't remember, so I'm confident in saying, oh I know you don't see them like this. I think I might have come in the wrong room. Because there are a couple of rooms that are deliberately meant to send you in the wrong direction so that you'll be uh, thrown off, as it were. You have to go in the opposite direction and go upstairs. Oh, hello. Come on. Move. There we go. Oh, I remember now. You have to jump on this section that's down here and then do a crouch jump here. That's one of the only crouch jumps in the entire game that you actually have to do to progress. Here we go. I'm not doing too bad in terms of uh, making quick work of it. It's just a case of continuing and not stopping. Especially if they're in a crowded area like that, the best thing to do is just grenade. Because then you get flying flood like that. That and turn off the energy bridge just in case, because then you don't get any of them following you from behind. There we go. I think this is almost the end of the level here. So there is an achievement to get all these marines to the um, the facility on the other side of the swamp. Interestingly enough, this part of the, the mission was turned into a multiplayer mission in Halo 2. Or rather, a multiplayer map, sorry. I can't remember what the map was called, but uh, it had a couple of uh, different monitors flying around it, and it was good for just the effects that it had because you had like sentinel beams all over the place. Kind of like this one eventually. Oh, oh crap. I thought that was a flood. The only problem with the flood is they look, in, uh, at least in the dark, they look a lot like the marines because of the colours that they were, or rather the colours that they are and the colours that mar the marines were. So it's, it's kind of awkward to tell the difference between the two in some cases. Yeah, you know, hell. I think I just lost a marine there. God damn it. Oh crap. I, I love the way he just he was just limping away with a uh, a flood spore attached to his leg. Here we go, so this is now just a standoff, kind of like horde mode, where you, uh, you just have to avoid the flood, or rather kill all of them as quickly as possible while the sentinels come out to help you. And this is the, uh, the first sign of Forerunner technology on the ring since the beginning of the game. Oh. 
Thing is, Forerunner technology on its own does not do any good against the Flood. It's like one Sentinel versus a bunch of Flood will lose, but a group of Sentinels are really good at, at mapping up Flood. So all you gotta do is just make sure they're all dead and then it's the end of the mission. So that was 343 Guilty Spark. Greetings. I am the monitor of Installation 04. I am 343 Guilty Spark. Someone has released the flood. My function is to prevent it from leaving this installation, but I require your assistance. Come, this way. <laughs> 